Hello traders, welcome in our YouTube channel. In this video, we're going to talk about our watch list for the first week of June 2020. If this regular session helps you to trade better in the stock market, please do me a favor, hit that subscribe button and ring the bell so you would not miss any episode of our weekly watch list. So let's get started. So pag-usapan natin muna ang index, ang naging performance ng index. So last Friday it have a rally, no? About a uh, 5% gain, no? And with with a tripled, no, sa volume na iniangat because of the uh, implementation ng GCQ ng ating government ngayong June 1. So of course, as you all know, kapag na-implement yung GCQ, it will uh, partially open those businesses no, para makapag-generate uh, na sila ng income. Of course, uh, it will be partially opened lang. So, hindi yan yung totally na magre-recover. Pero of course, yung losses kahit pa paano is mamiminimize. No? Kahit pa paano, eh, merong papasok na income. And at the same time, they will uh, get the economy running again. no, But slowly. So, that's why nagkaroon ng breakout dito sa 5700 level points no at uh, nakikita mo tong volume talagang uh, tripled sa average daily volume and of course closing above the 5800 level so as you can see ang pinaka magiging range pa rin natin is etong 5500 levels of support etong ultimate support and of course yung 6000 points no dito sa may ultimate resistance so ganito yan upon the implementation of GCQ no uh, I would advise that you would always co uh, trade cautiously. No? So, wag kang medyo maging kampante kasi nag-breakout na siya sa 5700. At the same time, uh, na-lifted na yung mga MECQ, no? naging GCQ na tayo. Wag kayo maging kampante because, of course, our uh, aim no? or goal para ma-flatten yung curve against the COVID-19, hindi pa natin nakikita yun so far. And of course, you will remember na yung MECQ started around like May 15 hanggang sa katapusan ng May. Of course, uh, yung pinaka-exact number or accuracy ng mga COVID cases na during the MECQ, hindi yan kaagad-agad nagre-reflect. No? So for example, uh, ikaw nagkasakit ka no, during May 15 no, nung MECQ, hindi yan magmamanifest kaagad. Diba? It will take you 1 to 2 to 3 days no, depende sa immune system mo. Of course, akala mo lagnat lang or simpleng ubo lang. Of course, it will take another few days, 4 to 5 days bago ka mapag-check up. Then, of course, kapag nakapag-check up ka na and of course, nalagay ka na sa uh, isolation or suspected na COVID cases, of course, it will take like 1 to 2 weeks in general or in totality bago ka maisama sa list or mga listahan ng suspected COVID cases. So, yung Ispan ng May 15 hanggang sa katapusan ng May 15, hindi pa natin masyadong alam or very clear kung ilan talaga yung naging COVID cases no during the MECQ. So lately lang, I do not know the exact number ng COVID cases pero alam ko few days ago, merong around 500 no cases in one day only. So all time high yan simula nung March no. So grabe yung naging angat ng COVID cases. So we cannot be complacent na during the MECQ eh hindi dumadagdag eh dapat uh, maging kampante tayo. No, kasi yung manifestation nga ng COVID-19, yung pagiging updated ng list eh mangyayari yan after a few weeks, no? after one week or two weeks kasi yung pagkakaroon ng sakit bago ka maging malala yung sakit mo, it takes time. Hindi naman na kapag na-infect ka ngayong araw, eh ngayong araw mismo eh lalagnatin ka na ng sobrang taas at mapaparash ka na sa hospital, hindi ganun, ba It takes like 2 to 3 days daw, ba Or 4 days, depende sa immunity mo. Kapag ka nadala ka sa hospital, it will take another days, no? Para i-assess ka at bago ka mailagay sa suspected na COVID cases, bago ka lang mailalagay sa statistics. So, it takes few days, kaya may delay. So, of course, uh, during the GCQ period, noong July, uh, noong June 1, of course, uh, expectation mo, mangyayari yan uh, yung mga new cases no yung updated new cases during the GCQ period is mangyayari yan on the second week of June so of course uh, wag ka maging kampante and you will trade na very very 
uh, carelessly, no? So, wag ganon kasi, of course, we cannot see the full impact yet ng GCQ. Of course, uh, trade in a very, very cautious manner, no? So, may possibility na it will reach the 6,000 points again bago siya mag-slide down or dito pa lang on Monday, it, it will retrace back here at around 5,700 level of resistance. So, either way, uh, expect uh, some sort of retracement, no? So, medyo hindi pa rin ako optimistic with the, ma with the market perspective kasi nga we doesn't uh, even flatten the curve successfully or eradicate the increasing number of COVID-19 cases. So, let's have some sort of review dun sa mga naging watch list natin uh, last week, no? So, as you can see, watch list natin uh, si Seb, no? Na uh, last week. So, trade initially spotted and carefully planned last May 22 when I foresighted a bullish divergence and possible bottoming process if the stock hit the estimated support at 32 pesos per share with an RSI of 17 at ultimate support. Uh, today, the stock went as high as 20% intraday but failure to break the MA20 at the price resistance also of 41.15 pesos per share. So, sabi ko, that is why a uh, sell-on strength is highly advisable as recommended. So, makikita nyo yan dito sa uh, daily status natin sa mga student natin na constantly nag update tayo ng daily and weekly uh, charting session na mas comprehensive compared dito sa free tutorial natin. So, as you can see, uh, i-visit natin yung chart ni Seb, no? So dito pa lang na spot na natin yung trade no at around May 22 di ba after it broke down the 36.6 no pesos per share then we estimated an another support level at around 32 pesos per share no somewhere here tapos unfortunately uh, nag breakdown pa nga siya umusli siya ng konti bago siya nagkaroon ng bounce back and of course if we try to observe the RSI it is at the ultimate support level, no? Dito sa oversold level at RSI 19. So, initially, the trade setup, meron tayo nakitang uh, bullish divergence. That's that's why it led to the spike play or bounce play ng ating stock or watch list. So, as you can see, kung na-hold mo to ng tatlong araw, approximately kung nakabili ka somewhere here, no? Kunwari sa pinaka-support ng 32.2, at nabenta mo dito lang, meron ka ng around 11%. And of course, di ba sinabi ko sell on strength. So pwede mong i-target yan up until here giving you a yield of 26%. Not bad na yan, di ba? So saan ka makakakita in just 2 days or 3 days, no? 26%. So as you can see, it failed to break out the MA20 at as it tried to revisit its previous resistance at 41.15 pesos per share. Tapos bumalik siya, no? It, it retraced back to... Uh, MA9, no? Failure to break out the MA9 at around uh, 36.7 pesos per share. So, kung makikita mo tong volume, it almost it almost quadrupled the daily average volume. It's just because dung initially, nung first few hours ng trading day sa market, eh talagang pataas ito. Then, eventually, it doesn't hold, no? Until the end of the day at binuhusan siya pabalik. That is why sell on strength is highly advisable kasi nga bounce play to at the same time Friday na nung nakaraan kaya talagang binuhusan siya pabalik. So of course uh, pagka ganito, di ba Cebu Pacific, of course alam mo naman na yung industry nito, airline industry is talagang highly impacted because of the COVID-19, no? So mga travel bans and etc etc. So talagang highly impacted sila although wala namang stock na talagang like 20 days na talagang bearish candle, walang ganun, like 50 days bearish candle. So expect na merong kahit pa paano spike, spike or bounce play na magaganap. So if you are uh, professional enough to trade those bounces at talagang uh, risk taker ka, pwede mong i-trade yun. So nabigyan natin ng heads up yung mga students natin at sa kanilang daily at timely updates no so congrats kung meron ka nito and enjoy your gain at around like 15 to 20 percent dapat happy ka na doon kasi iilang araw mo lang siya kinita no so next thing we will talk about si sec b no security bank the trade initially spotted and carefully planned last may 22 when i foresighted a bullish divergence and possible bottoming process if the stock hit the estimated support at 81.3 pesos per share and 75 
pesos per share with an RSI 17 at ultimate support. The sell-off was led by the institutional firm and funds because of the MSCI rebalancing wherein SEC B has been removed. So today is the effective date of the said MSCI rebalancing. So ito yung naging update natin sa mga student and also di ba na banggit natin to sa YouTube channel natin na watch list siya no last week. So if you will try to revisit SEC B no kung makikita nyo uh, during this time uh, dito natin nakita si SEC B yung trade idea no at around 81.35 no. Tapos, di ba, hindi, hindi niya na hold itong support level and it finally broke down and challenged the 75 pesos per share. So, kung makikita mo yung RSI, di ba, nasa pinaka ultimate oversold level na at around RSI 17, no? So, talagang uh, meron nang makikita ng oversold, oversold level. So, in this process, nagkaroon na ng bounce play. So, kung nasakyan mo to at na-catch na mo siya somewhere near the support, and nabenta mo, di ba, dito sa MA9, after it failed to break out, meron ka ng 8% gain. Pero kung nakapag-antay ka pa ng another day and you sell on strength, no, dito sa uh, 90 pesos per share, after it revisit the previous resistance, meron kang 15% gain. So either way, uh, meron ka pa rin decent gain, no, for 1 to 3 days. So that's why sabi ko it is very important na dapat alam mo kung ano yung ginagawa mo. So as you can see dito, uh, ito yung first day ng MSCI rebalancing. No? As you all know, kapag tinanggal yung stock na yon din sa MSCI rebalancing, of course yung mga global fund, mga ETF, they will start to liquidate their shares and bibili nila kung ano yung idadagdag na stock. For example, si Pure Gold, idadagdag. So they will liquidate SECB and of course they will transfer those uh, fund doon sa nadagdag. So, ganun ang nangyari. So, of course, uh, hindi naman yan agad-agad na dire-diretsong ano, like 10 days na na talagang bagsak or pula. Of course, you will expect a bounce play. Kaya nga, dapat alam mo kung saan yung uh, preferable na buying points so that you will not lose money in the trade. So, of course, this is a very risky kung hindi ka pasanay sa mga bounce play. Of course, this is not for newbie. So next thing we'll talk about those watch lists natin na good for next week sa first week ng June. So unahin na natin siguro si Tech, no? If we we'll try to observe Tech. So as you can see si Tech, uh, near MA50 na to, no? As you will try to observe at around 720, no? Pesos per share. And of course, it is near the upper resistive box dito sa gap. So as it will try to close the gap, may possibility na it will like uh, challenge the 6.9 pesos per share, pwede, to, to close the gap here. Or pwede dito sa may around 7.10 pesos per share, dito na mag-bounce. So if you are risk taker, pwede bumili ka somewhere near at 7.10 or dito sa MA50 uh, no, at around 7.20. Then iba to mo at around MA9 will give you a yield of 7% gain or up until here dito sa may MA200 giving you like 13 to 14% gain. So, depende kung saan mo siya mabibili. So, ang downside risk niya is kapag na-breakout niya, kunwari, nabili, nabili mo dito, nag-breakdown siya. So, it will touch the upper resistive box. Meron kang losses like around 2%. And of course, kapag ka lumusot pa yan hanggang dito sa lower resistive box, you will have a downside risk of around like 5%. So, depends na yan sa magiging risk management mo and risk appetite. So, ayan yung unang watch list natin for the first week of June. Of course, uh, kapag hindi mo pa natatrade itong si Tech, be very, very careful. Lalo na, we are in a very uh, sentiment. At the same time, this is a very highly volatile stock. So, next thing pag-uusapan natin is AXLM. No? So, si AXLM, as you will try to observe, uh, near na rin siya sa MA50 and it will have a potential bounce play. No? As you will try to observe, malapit na rin siya sa FIBS 382 at around like 2.56 no? pesos per share. Then, kunwari, uh, nag-bounce siya dito, pwede mong i-try ibenta at around like MA100 or dito sa may FIBS 50 at around uh, 2.77 pesos per share all the way up to FIBS 618 at around 3 pesos per share. So, this movement was initially led no, doon sa approval ng ating uh, research diba, to fight against the COVID-19. And at the same time, the President Duterte has also announced na 
he will give a reward no around 50 million yata i think doon sa mga doctors or scientists that who can uh, discover the cure of the COVID-19 or magkakaroon ng uh, vaccine about the COVID-19 using the virgin coconut oil. And of course, wala naman ibang stocks na, na involved sa coconut uh, produce, producing uh, company which is si Axelum lang. And of course, it will drive the demand dahil sa mga speculative play na gagamitin daw yung virgin coconut oil to treat the COVID-19 na sakit. So kaya nagkaroon ng uh, spike movement or konting momentum at around 3 pesos per share. But etong nagkaroon ng gap up dito, di ba? Uh, sabi ko dun sa daily update natin sa mga students ko, if the 3 pesos level per share will not hold, uh, do not expect a momentum and of course do not expect a possible ceiling play which is favorite natin. Kasi nga, hindi na na-sustain itong 3 pesos per share. And ayun, after few weeks, bumagsak talaga. And it closed the gap here. No? So kung makikita mo, talagang uh, sinarado niya talaga yung gap. Kasi nga, hindi naging sus successful yung speculative play. No? So ganun ang nangyari. So dito pa lang, nagkaroon na tayo ng uh, sell signal no? at avoid signal para hindi sila maipit. So that's why uh, talagang... We are very, very strict in following uh, trading rules and trading plan no? para hindi tayo maipit in this uh, pandemic season. No? So, ikaw naman, kung you are a risk taker and of course you are a bounce play trader, pwede mong saluin dito. Tapos kapag uh, hindi naging successful, of course you might manage your risk no? by taking losses uh, quickly. So, kung uh, manifested naman yung ano, trading plan natin at maging successful, ito yung magiging target price natin. And of course, last thing we will talk about is the SMC, no? Kasi a lot of you are asking me about SMC, no? So initially, talagang ayoko to kasi nga sideways to. But I can see some sort of potential after it has undergoed sideways for several weeks na. So maraming nagtatanong neto sa akin sa stock request, which we will do this tomorrow, no? So para at least we will be well prepared. So kung may hawak kayo at nagbabalak pa kayo, mga alaga nyo stock, if you will buy it by next week or not, or hold or avoid, so pag-uusapan natin yan by tomorrow. So in this case, as you will try to observe the Bollinger Band, no? the Bollinger Band has already squeezed and at the same time, it traded above MA50. No? So observe mo lang kung it will trade above the 96.5 pesos per share at the same time mga MA9 at MA20. So if it will try to reach out those uh, resistances, expect a potential target prices at around 100 pesos per share, 102.5 and at the same time 105 pesos per share, giving you a maximum potential gain of around 9%. No? So not bad, pero medyo um, position trading to, medyo maiinip ka, pero of course, uh, ito yung magiging possible target price mo. So, abang-abangan mo, pwedeng dito mo i-target pero medyo maliit lang ang gain at around 99.5, no? Pwedeng dito para kahit pa paano attractive like 6% at around 102.5, no? And kung kaya i-max out uh, itong potential gain natin at around 105 na naging previous resistance niya somewhere here. And of course, I hope this helps you to become a better trader in the market. And of course, aim to have a profitable week sa darating na June 2020. God bless and good night.